Hey y'all, so in this video we're going to look at exterior angles of polygons and we have to remember first what an exterior angle is. Uh, basically uh, you take a side of your polygon, you extend it out, um, and you get this linear pair between the polygon's angle and this other angle, and this other angle out here is the exterior angle. And so what I have in my drawing is a triangle with one full set of exterior angles drawn, okay? Now you notice I don't have like uh, all of the exterior angles drawn, right? Um, because I can actually, um, for example, extend this side out in this direction and create another exterior angle for angle A. Um, what I have instead is just one exterior angle for each of the triangle's angles. And so angles A, B, and C are the actual interior angles of the triangle, and D, E, and F are their um, exterior angles. And there's actually something kind of cool about the exterior angles, uh, or one set of exterior angles. Now we know the individual exterior angles form linear pairs with um, the angle of the polygon, right? So I know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D is going to equal to 180 degrees, right? Similarly, I know the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle E is also going to equal 180 degrees. And I also know that the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle F is also equal to 180 degrees, right? So if I add all of these up, right, I'm going to get um, 540 degrees on that side. So if I think about what A, B, and C are, A, B, and C have to be uh, the interior angles of the triangle. And if I add up this chunk of angles, right, I know that sum is going to be 180 degrees, right? And so that means that measures of angle D, E, and F are some degree that I don't know. And I get a really simple equation to find uh, D, E, and F together. And I get X equals 360 degrees. So that means the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F is going to equal 360 degrees. Now, the question is, hmm, what is it for a quadrilateral or a pentagon or a hexagon? Well, um, if I were to repeat this process, I would end up actually with the exact same thing, no matter how many sides my polygon has. If you don't believe me, try a quadrilateral, a really simple quadrilateral like a square. We know that in a square, it has, uh, if I were to draw out those one set of exterior angles, I'd have four exterior angles and, uh, you know, they would all be 90 degrees. And so that means the sum of the four exterior angles would also be a 360 degrees. You can try this with five, with six, with seven. You can repeat this process here using your polygon angle sum in this column. And no matter how many sides your polygon has, the exterior angles, uh, one set of them, are gonna always add up to 360 degrees. It's kind of cool. So of course this gives us conjecture 33, the exterior angle sum conjecture for any polygon, the sum of the measures of this of I set, one set of exterior angles is always 360 degrees. So there's actually a really cool way of of visualizing this. And we're gonna just have you do it as a thought experiment, and you can check to see if if you imagined it correctly by uh, checking a Desmos construction I created that I'll link in the description. In your mind, draw an n-gon and a set of exterior angles. And I want you to think about what happens when the sides of that n-gon shrink and approach zero. And what would that picture look like? And if you can visualize that, it's another way for us to um, derive uh, that exterior angle sum conjecture. And to end our look at the polygon angles, is there anything special going on when I have an equiangular polygon? 
Remember, equiangular means all of the angles are congruent inside the polygon. And a lot of people immediately think regular pentagons or octagons or hexagons, uh, where their sides and angles are congruent. But uh, you don't have to be a regular polygon to have uh, equal angle measurements, right? Um, rectangle is the most common example. And so actually rectangle is a, is a good way to start here. So uh, if they're equiangular, and I know the sum of the interior angles, then I know the measure of each of the individual angles, right? And so there's two quick ways of doing this, which give us formulas. Uh, we use the polygon sum. If I have an n gone, I know the sum of its interior angles is 180, and uh, I can simply divide by the number of sides, and that is equal to one, sorry, the measure of one interior angle. And so remember, this has to be an equiangular n gon, not any n gon, just all the angles are equal, which, you know, makes sense, right? Um, and there's an alternative method, which I think is pretty cool. Um, you can use the exterior angle sum, and we know that the sum of the exterior angles of an n gon are 360 degrees, and the measure of any one of those exterior angles is going to be 360 degrees divided by n, and this is the measure one exterior angle. And I also know the exterior angle and the interior angle are linear pairs, therefore supplementary. And so an alternate way of coming up with the measure of one of the interior angles of an equiangular n-gon is, is this formula here, 180 minus 360 divided by n. Now, of course, if I simplified this one uh, algebraically, I would get this one. Um, so uh, algebraically, they're equivalent. This is simplified. That is not simplified. But it's kind of cool to see that they come from different perspectives, right? Like it's not just an algebraic simplification. This formula comes from taking the polygon sum and dividing it by the number of angles to get one angle. This is taking the perspective of using the exterior angle sum and the fact that the exterior angle and interior angle are linear pairs. So I think that's pretty cool. And so of course, we have to finish off with the official conjecture, C34, the equal angular polygon conjecture says you can find the measure of each interior angle of an equal angular n-gon by using either 180 minus 360 over n or 180 times quantity n minus 2 divided by n.